let's give God a hand praise of worship this morning. As always, you know, he started us on our way. He woke us up this morning. He kept you safe from any hurt, harm, and danger. And God, are you here this morning? And so for that, we ought to be grateful. Amen. Amen. We're going to welcome you to yet another Sunday morning service with us. If you're joining us for the first time, we say welcome. If you're joining us online, we say welcome to you. We are so grateful that you chose to worship with us this morning. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose us. And for that, again, we are grateful. We like to say you come as a stranger, but leave as family. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our pastor, first lady, assistant pastor, deacon, deaconesses, mothers, and everyone under the sound of my voice. We are so grateful for you. And now what I'd like for you to do is to turn your attention to our big screen for this week's announcements. Here are your, are your upcoming, upcoming events, events and announcements, and announcements for, this for this week. Here are our prayer focuses for this month. For more information, please visit www.newhopesaintpete.com forward slash prayer. Join us April 28th for our volunteer appreciation service in Bloom Brunch. Come out and help us celebrate all your hard work. The youth department needs you. Contact Sister Rochelle at 727-766-2691 to see how you can get involved. Transitioning to college can be a significant financial undertaking for many families. Scan the QR code to learn more about how your student can potentially earn two years of college education at no cost. The deadline to apply is April 21st. Attention parents of class of 2024, the time has come for you to submit your student's name for the J.L. Fennell Scholarship. To learn more, see Deaconess Darlene Hill or Deaconess Carol Tim to learn more about the scholarship's requirements. Join Tampa Bay Watch and New Hope Missionary Baptist Church for a sensational free marine science pop-up camp. Scan the QR code for more information. We are embarking on an exciting journey of redevelopment. We encourage you to participate in our campus redevelopment survey. This survey is an opportunity for your voice to be heard. The survey opens April 7th and will remain open until April 14th. We are grateful for your commitment to our shared mission of learning, loving, growing, and connecting. Together, we will create a space that continues to inspire, uplift, and serve all those who enter our doors. As we begin the renovation process for our new campus here at New Hope, we want to share with you some example images from the first walkthrough that we've had. We want you to dream with us so you can see the possibilities of what New Hope's new campus could look like. For God has everything in his hands and with God, nothing is impossible. Are you or someone you know grieving? Join Grief Support every third Monday at 6.30 in Classroom 3 here at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Don't forget, submit all announcements by Wednesday of each week to announcements at newhopestpete.com. Did you miss today's announcements? Scan this QR code to stay abreast of all the activities and events that are happening here on campus. Check out the vestibule for the QR code as well. Amen. Those conclude our um, 
announcements for this week, but we do want to at least remind everybody that what we've done is also put information out in the vestibule for you to have a copy of the announcements and a hard copy. They are on the table in the vestibule. And then also we want to again highlight that today is the last day for you to submit your ideas for our campus redevelopment. Uh, we have to get this information over to our architect. That's why we only had it open for a week because our architect is headed out of town. Um, so please, sir, if ma'am, if you are interested in putting your input, please, when you scan the QR code, um, we'll put it back up on the screen. But if you do scan that, please go in and fill out that information. We'll compile all of your data and then we're gonna be sending it over to our architect. Um, so that we can begin our process of transformation for our campus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'll turn it over to our intercessory prayer team for scripture and prayer. Good morning, New Hope family. Our scripture coming from Jeremiah 2.11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, New Hope. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Bless us to the Lord. Father God, we are so grateful for this morning, grateful for this new day this new mercy that you told us in your word would be afforded to us every day. Lord, we just ask you to come into this place. Let your presence be felt. Father God, we ask that you just um, cleanse our heart, mind, and spirit. Father God, forgive us of our sins. Father God, we want to be approving in your sight. So wash our hearts and minds, creating us a clean heart, mind, and spirit, oh Father God, so that we can be ever so closer to you. Father God, fill this place with your presence this morning. Father God, you told us in your word that you'll never leave us or forsake us. And oh God, we just thank you. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you in. We welcome you in. Father God, we thank you for watching over us. On last night as we slept and slumbered, we thank you for our portion of realm sleep that you allowed us to have. We thank you for encamping your angels of mercy and protection all around us while we slept. You kept us, oh God, when we didn't even realize that we yet still existed. But you kept us. And so we thank you and we praise you. We ask that you bless each and every one of us within this sanctuary. Those that are watching at home, Father God, touch bodies, heal bodies, strengthen bodies, regulate minds, oh Father God. Give comfort, oh God, for the weary. Lift up countenance, Oh God, in the name of Jesus, give clarity, Father God, where there's confusion. Oh Father God, reconciliate, Father God, where there's separation. We need you, oh God, show up in a mighty way, in a mighty way, oh God. We need you and truly cannot make it without you. You told us in your word, Father God, that we, we just call upon you, Father God, that you will answer. So, Father God, we call upon you humbly, and we're thanking you for the opportunity to approach your throne of grace openly and freely, without fear of persecution, oh, Father God. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for the remission of our sins. Oh, Father God, we thank you for the substitutionary death that he gave, oh, Father God, for the righteous that he gave up for the unrighteous. We thank you. Help us to not take that for granted. Help us to never take it for granted. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Help us to not use it as a crutch, oh Father God, for being displeasing in your sight. But just please forgive us. Help us, Father God, where we fall is short. Leading God is in the way that you would have us to go. Give us understanding of your word, oh Father God, so that we can please you. Because we, we cannot please you, oh Father God, unless we know you. And we can't know you, Father God, until we get into your word. So give us the encouragement, enthusiasm. Give us a hunger and a thirst. Help us to understand your word so that we can know you and understand you. 
Lord, bless each and every family represented in this place this morning, in this sanctuary, at home, in each and every community, and everyone attached. All of us, oh God, we need you. Those are here, those that may be in, uh, in, on their sick bed, in the hospitals, nursing home. Father God, touch. There may be those that have something going on and don't even know it yet, Father God. Prevent it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your will to be done in our lives, in our health, in our relationships. Oh, Father God, we ask that you just touch. We lay this uh, camp vision for the campus, this new hope, Missionary Baptist Church campus. We give it to you, Father God. We give you the glory in each and every aspect of the planet. In the name of Jesus, you be in every aspect of it, from the architect, from the planning, the blueprint, um, finances, Father God, we give it to you, and we say thank you. We're thanking you in advance. And we're giving you the glory. Now, Lord, be with the leader of this branch of Zion, Raptor Carlos, our senior, and his family. Be with Reverend Shepherd and his family, all the elders, deacons, deaconess, every ministry leader, man, woman, boy, and girl, Father God. Send your anointing on us. Help us, Father God, as New Hope Mission at Baptist Church to be a church that you said in your word you're coming back for without spot, wrinkle, or a blemish, oh, Father God. Help us to be a praying church, oh, Father God. Help us to know how to lift one another up. You said in your word the effect of fervent prayer of the righteous availing much. Father God, help us to be able to avail much, oh God. And we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, and we give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. literally means that he will give you desires that align with his word and what he's called you to specifically and and we just have to trust and we have to know that God is working a great work in us and that when we submit our plans to him he's the architect that's going to bring them through to fruition and so we have to learn to take a posture of surrender. God, I surrender everything to you. The small things, the big things, the things that I can see, the things that I can't see. God, help us to defend what you have blessed us with in the spirit realm. God, with the things that we can't see, with the opposition we can't see. God, help us to walk in your spirit. God, God we surrender everything everything to you, everything we give to you, in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on and stand up if you're ready to worship. Come on and take a posture of surrender this morning. Come on and take a posture of giving it all to him this morning.
testimony he's not done with me yet yes God yes God there's so much more to this story you're not done with me yet you're not done with me yet yes God yes God you're not done with me
Hallelujah. Anybody going to trust in him? Anybody trust in the Lord? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not to your own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. thus you must decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a cheerful giver and God will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others let us pray most eternal father that sits high and looks low that knows all, hears all, and sees all. Father God, once again, your children come. Let's say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Father, for our lying down last night and our early rising this morning. We come thank you, Holy Father, for allowing us to fellowship one another one more time. Father God, we come now, Holy Father, as you put, look upon this blessing. Look upon the ones who are about to give, Father God. Look upon the ones who have the means, who have the desire, but not the means. Bless them, Holy Father, to be able to give in the next offering. 
these blessings, all blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. When all God's children get together, oh. place. Father, we thank you for the awesome opportunity to, to be uh, in your presence, uh, to be among the saints. Uh, we ask now, God, as we proclaim your word, uh, that your anointing would continue to flow in and through this place. Oh, how good and pleasant it is uh, for brethren to dwell together in unity. Uh, we are grateful for the anointing that flows through our connectedness um, community um, and we just pray God that as you are at work in us uh, that that work uh, in us would be visible around and out of us um, as we minister to others and fulfill our calling help us to work out our salvation uh, with fear and trembling uh, in the presence uh, in your presence uh, and in the presence of all, all of these witnesses. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. And every believing heart said amen. 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 Come on, can we give God a praise this morning? God is good. Amen. God is good and greatly to be praised. Uh, we, um, God bless uh, praise team, uh, ministers, uh, to our fellow, fellow elders, deacons, deaconess, to all of God's children, uh, we are grateful uh, to be together again. And um, if you would join us in Psalm 29, I won't be in front of you long this morning. 
Um, but there is a word from the Lord in Psalm 29. Psalm 29. Psalm 29, and I'm reading from the King James. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars, yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a, a calf, Lebanon and Syrian, like a, like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf and discovereth the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. May the Lord be with you. For a few minutes uh, from this passage, I'd like to share with you from this thought. And can I get a little bit more volume in the, on the, um, the monitor, please? Uh, from this thought, um, he prepares a place for me. He prepares a place for me. Uh, the sub-thought uh, from this text is victory over the chaos. Victory over the chaos. He prepares a place for me. As we look at Psalm 29, the first two verses, I want you to, if you don't mind, for a moment, use your uh, sanctified imagination. And I want you to envision uh, what it is to be in front of or to sit uh, and witness the performance of an orchestra. I think about uh, even a couple of Sundays ago during Easter Sunday when we had uh, the wonderful choir up in the stand. And for the first time in a long time, we had someone actually in front of a group of people providing guidance. Uh, we call that person the conductor. And I want you to imagine for a moment uh, that you were sitting in front of an orchestra preparing to play a, a beautiful symphony uh, for uh, our pleasure. The first thing that the conductor is going to do as the orchestra is, is, is warming up, he's going to take his baton and sometimes they will, you know, uh, tap the lectern and get everyone's attention so that everyone can now play whatever it is uh, that's on the menu for, um, for performance. In the same way, the psalmist is inviting us, orchestrating our worship, and he is calling us to join together with those who are already harmonizing and singing, that is the heavenly chorus. He calls them the mighty. Others will interpret that as the angelic ones, those who are powerful beings. The psalmist says, I want to invite all of you to join in with heaven's chorus to sing a particular kind of song. The song that's on the menu today is to celebrate our God. And even though there are many things that we could celebrate, right, about God, do I have a witness in the building? All right, there are so many things that we can sing uh, his praises about. But this morning, the psalmist says we want to sing a little bit, we want to talk a little bit about his strength and his victory. 
I can just imagine in my own imagination that there's somebody in the back of the room that's going to call out to the worship leader, talk your stuff. If we're talking about God and his victory and his strength, then sign me up. If what's on the menu for praise and worship is to celebrate a God who is all-powerful, who can do anything but fail, whose victory is from everlasting to everlasting, then please sign me up for that choral performance. This invitation from the psalmist is a reminder to us, beloved, that the praise that we offer to God is not just a part of our duty reflected in our design. I mean, how many know that he designed us to worship him? The psalmist reminds us that our praise is not merely a function of our duty or our design. But the psalmist reminds us that our praise is, in fact, the privilege that we have been given by virtue of the fact that we have experienced God's strength and we have been the beneficiaries of his victory. In other words, the invitation to sing really is to those who have experienced God in these ways. And so if you have experienced God as victor, and if you have experienced him as dunamis, as strength, then you are like, uh, what's the kid uh, in Her uh, 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 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that got the golden ticket? Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, but you, Charlie, is it Charlie? Okay, uh, all right, all right. Yeah, it's right there in the title. Thank y'all, y'all help me. Y'all help me, look at y'all, amen. Y'all with me, I know somebody's still woke. You, like Charlie, have been given the golden ticket. Uh, you have shown up to God's house, and you have something to talk about. I mean, one of the worst positions to be in is to show up somewhere and be asked to engage in conversation in which you have no familiarity, asked to discuss, th to discuss things of which you do not understand and have no experience. But the psalmist says, everyone that is in the purview of my of my invitation, you certainly have something to sing about. You have something to talk about if you have experienced the victory that comes with being in covenant relationship with Elohim. Uh, in other words, don't allow anybody to close your mouth, not in this venue, because this is the venue in which we have been called together in order to celebrate our great king. Somebody ought to say praise is a privilege. Uh, I praise because I have something to praise him for. I praise because I have something to talk about. Uh, I may not know everything there is to know about uh, what the Bible says from Genesis to Revelation. But if you pull me into a corner and ask me just a little bit about who God is to me, uh, I can talk to you until your ears are ready to fall off uh, because he has been just that good to me. Uh, he's a way maker, a problem solver. He's a bridge over troubled water. He's a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. Uh, there's a reason why many of these maxims exist, reasons why for generations members of the church have repeated these quotes to one another because they are rooted in the experience of the worshiper. When you have experienced God, no one has to prompt you, but when the invitation is given, you run in skipping, jumping, and hopping because God is just that good. Uh, sometimes I'm mystified by folk that will get loud about how good food is at a restaurant, but are quiet in the presence of the saints when it comes to talking about how, God, how good God is by putting bread on your table. 
I'm, I, I'm sometimes mystified by folk that will go on and on about the latest movie or, or the latest CD dropped by their favorite artist, but are silent and have very little to say when it comes to the way that God has orchestrated the musicality of your life and put every note in order so that you can move to the rhythm of his Holy Spirit. I wish somebody would talk to me this morning. I thank God. That, that, that mankind has not come up with enough words to describe the level of good that he is. Good doesn't cover it. Great doesn't cover it. Amazing doesn't cover it. Wonderful doesn't cover it. Whatever those words are, those superlatives that we use to describe God, they fall short of his majesty. And so the psalmist invites us. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise him because of his strength and because of his victory. He then goes on to, to talk about the strength of the Lord on display, especially within the context of nature. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters and the glory of God thundereth. The, the Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf. It discovereth the forest. And in his temple doeth, doth everyone speak of his glory. He encourages us as we focus on the strength of God, in particular to focus on the power that is found in God's voice. That when God speaks, things happen. It reminds me of uh, back in the day, uh, when you'd be in, in the house and, and bad weather would show up and it would get the, the lightning and thundering outside and as Thunder would rumble and the lightning would flash. Grandma and them would, would make everybody sit down, be still. Even, even now, my mother-in-law who, who, who resides with us, when it starts lightning and thundering, she want everybody in the house to sit down and to be still. Just as the storm commands our reverence and awe, the psalmist says, so does the voice of the Lord. When God speaks, he speaks with, with such a quality of authority that his sovereignty is undeniable. In the same way that we find ourselves in awe of natural phenomenon, the psalmist reminds us that all of these naturally occurring things within creation pale in comparison to the resonance of God's voice as it booms throughout creation. And over and over again, he he compares the voice of the Lord and, and how the Lord's voice can be a disruptive influence within the context of the world that he's created, that his voice is powerful. Whether it is the cedars of Lebanon. Now, now, if we lived in that community, we would have some familiarity with the cedars of Lebanon. They, they were renowned for their durability and strength. Uh, 
If you wanted to have something made, you wanted it made out of cedar. And even now, cedar is known for its durability and strength. And he says, even in the face of the cedars of Lebanon, God's voice is powerful. His, his voice is able to break what others believe is unbreakable. I wish somebody would catch that. Things that we perceive to be impenetrable, that, that there is nothing to be done about it. That we serve the kind of God that there is nothing in nature that is so strong, so durable, that it can escape God's power. And maybe this morning you might be dealing with a situation that you feel is intractable. You, you don't see a way through and it, and it feels like what you're up against is going to break you before you can break it. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's a hang up. Maybe there's something that the enemy has managed to dig into your heart and you've been trying with all of your effort to get it out of there because you want to live holy. And the writer of this psalm wants to remind us that we worship a God whose voice is able to break even the unbreakable. When something has a hold on you, something has a hold on your children, something has a hold on your life. We serve a God who is able to break the grip of the enemy simply by speaking a word. I'm convinced, thoroughly convinced that increasingly what people need in their lives more than anything is the resonant voice of God. Apostle Johnny Washington used to say back in the day on the, the radio waves of Charleston, South Carolina, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's another way of saying that it is ultimately the voice and the presence of God that is able to shift the unshiftable, to, to reshape that which is unshapeable in our own hands. That what is too hard for us is just right for him, that he has a voice that breaks even the cedars of Lebanon. And he doesn't stop there. It is not just the cedars of Lebanon, but he says, even when we talk about the region of Lebanon and Syrian, these are mountainous regions. He says, he says his voice is so powerful that, that, that it makes these, these spaces skip like calves. He talks about these mountains that, that under the influence of God's voice, mountains skip. Of course, he's, he's speaking euphemistically, but there is some literalism in terms of, of what he's saying. He's basically saying that, that God's voice is able to move the unmovable. Many of what the, the psalmist is saying echoes, and we'll talk about this in our close, the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Because wasn't it Jesus who said that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, that you can say to the mountain, get up, move, and be cast in the sea? The psalmist lets us know that the God that we serve has such authority that when he speaks, he is able to move even those things that we in our minds and in our intellectualism believe cannot be moved. His voice can move people, places, and things. People who try and block the way of the righteous, no matter how much power and influence they have, we serve a God who is able to move you even if you don't want to be moved. I wish somebody would hear me. We are never at the mercy of nature or the elements. We are never in the hands of an enemy. We are always and ever in his hands. And to be in his hands is to be secure. 
Because the God that we serve is not a little G God. He's a big G God. He is a big G God. He is a big G God. And he is able to move some stuff. Anybody ever witnessed him move some stuff that, that you weren't sure if it could be moved or not? And then you looked up and, and he had moved it and you couldn't believe that he'd moved it. And then sometimes you couldn't believe how he moved it. Anybody ever seen God move something and you didn't even have to lift a pinky finger? All you had to do was call on and trust the name of the Lord. And, and when you called on his name by faith, he showed up and he moved what needed to be. Anybody ever had him move something off your heart? Move something out of your life? Move something out of your path? Move something off of your mind? He is able Come on, tell somebody, no matter how heavy it is, there's no trauma too heavy for God to move. Did, 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 you, did you catch me? There's no disappointment too heavy for him to move, even when he has to pick you up. I mean, have you ever felt so heavy that it felt like when you went down, you weren't going to get back up again, but he found you? Like Elijah hiding in the cave, worried about Jezebel, worried about Ahab. And he came in a still, small voice and said, get thee from out of here. I still got work for you to do. He is able to move the immovable. I'm not talking about something I think or I'm guessing at. I've seen him. Hey! Somebody ought to say, and he's moving some stuff right now. He's moving some stuff right now. He's moving some stuff. And they said to him another day, Lord, you're making me nervous. He moves mountains, makes them skip. Like calves. Think about that imagery. Little, little baby cow skipping through the meadow. He says, don't you know that that weight, that heavy thing that's, that's got you so worried and anxious that you serve a God that not only is able to move it, but to leave in its wake a joy. See, the mountain ain't just moving, the mountain is skipping. That means that there's a joy in the whole process of its movement, that, that God is not only able to move some stuff, but he's able to change some stuff as he's moving the stuff that needs moving. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. It's not just that God moved it, it's what God moved in me as he was moving the stuff around me. I, I thank you, God, not just that you were able to change my circumstance, but I thank you, God, that you were able to change the environment around my circumstance. That the things that used to give me grief, when I look at them, they now give me joy. Because when I look at it, I can, I can visualize God just moving that, just skipping it on out my life. It's nothing like when he takes your mourning and turns it into laughter. When he gives you the oil of joy for your sorrow and beauty for your ashes. When weeping endures for a night and then joy breaks over that morning horizon. Come on, touch somebody and tell them it only endures for a night. It only endures for a night. And even in the night season, he is with us because night is as day to the Lord. He made them both. He's the one that divided and separated them there. The night has no power over him because he is all powerful. The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. Talking about the lightning. 
The word that's used here for lightning in the text is actually found in the Ugaritic Ugaric, Ugaric text of the, of the, of the Baalites. The people who in that region worshiped Baal. Baal was thought to be the, the god of thunder. Many of the hieroglyphs that, that record him from that time where they, you know, his, his worshipers, you know, created these images of him. Imagine him holding lightning bolts. So this is almost like a, a sneak diss. <laughs> in honor of everything that's going on in hip hop this week. It's like the writer of the psalm slips this in, reminding them that these other gods that people bow down to do not hold the candle to the one true and living God. That what they claim to do, he is able to actually do. That when you find yourself in a storm, the psalmist wants to invite you to call upon the name of the Lord who rides every storm. This is not the time to go out and try to find you, you know, the right kind of crystals. Find the right kind of root doctor. To try to find the right kind of sage to burn in your house in order to ward off evil spirits. But when you find yourself in a storm, it's time to call him who rides every storm. The one whose voice divideth the lightning. The one who speaks and even the lightning has to obey. Doesn't that sound familiar? Again, echoes of the ministry of Jesus where he is speaking to the storm and telling the storm, peace, be still. And those who look on wonder, what kind of man is this? He's the son of man. Mm. What kind of man is this that speaks to the storm and the winds and they have to obey? You don't have to ask that question. You know him and you've seen his handiwork in, his, in your life. And if you don't know him and have not seen him, this is your invitation to come to know that I am that I am. He who is Emmanuel, God who is with us the first son of many sons and daughters of God. His voice, his voice provides victory over the chaos. He is moving things, making things, shaking things in order that we would have a place. He prepares a place for me. Stay with me. And he talks about in verse number eight, the voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. That even in areas where there is barrenness, and, and, and really what he was talking about, they don't, uh, the scholars don't necessarily know, we don't know necessarily what, which particular desert region is under discussion, but there's some who surmise. But, but what we do know is that we're talking about an arid place, a place where nothing is growing, nothing is flourishing. He says, even that place does not stand a chance in the, in the, in the presence of an all-powerful God. That his voice shaketh the wilderness. That the place where there is no life, the place where there is, uh, there, there is a lack of vegetation and growth, that his voice is able to rearrange some things and shake some things up to turn the soil over so that a place that could not grow anything previously is now allowed to flourish under his sovereign hand. This is the God that he invites us to worship. The God who can take our wilderness and transform it into a garden. Take our dryness and give us, as Jesus said to the woman by the well, living water so that you never thirst again. I, I'm preaching. I wish I, 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 this, 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 ah, ah, I feel like shouting. I feel like shouting. I feel like shouting when you're dry, when you're dry, when you're dry. 
and you've been in relationship after relationship, just trying to find somebody who gets you, understands you, who will speak into your life, cultivate growth in you. And then along comes Jesus and says, I have everything that you need. And you say, oh, well, I, I've heard about, amen. I've heard about church and people go worship over here and worship over there. And Jesus say, ain't necessarily about where you, you're the address. But God is looking for what? True worshipers to what? Worship him in spirit and in and we come to him in spirit and in truth as he beckons us, as we are invited. He will give you living water so that you don't ever have to, thir you don't have to be thirsty. You don't have to look for validation and affirmation through your social media sites. You, you don't have to, to be thirsty. You don't, have to, you don't have to look for people to validate the work you're doing and your value and your worth in life. God says, I will give you living water, water that will bubble up purpose in your heart, water that will provide you with direction, water that will nourish your soul and give you a sense of your sonship, the fact that you are a daughter of the Most High God. I can turn your wilderness into a garden. Anybody right now living in a garden right now, in the garden of God's presence? This is why David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. How many know that David wasn't talking about life after death? Uh, if that were the case, he wouldn't have said later on in the same song, I wouldn't have made it if I had to wait, if, if I only perceived that I would see the goodness of the Lord uh, later on in death. He says, but no, I have I, my, my desire is to perpetually be in his presence, not later, but now and forever. I wish somebody would hear me. Uh, that's why the psalm says that the tree that is rooted by, by an established body of water flourishes no matter what season it might be in. When you and I perpetually dwell in the presence of God, it is impossible for us to be internally wilderness oriented. Not when he overflows with life. When the life giver is walking with you, talking with you, living in you, working through you, then everything that pertains to you will reflect his life. The psalmist says, you'll shake it up. And sometimes we don't want it shaken. But his voice will shake it up. I want to encourage somebody, not only in terms of, you know, I want to get where I'm going, but not only in terms of let's worship the God who was able to take a wilderness and shake it up. But let's also, as worshipers, come in with a receptive heart and, and maybe in some cases even calling the Lord to come and shake it up. God... I don't want to be so comfortable and so afraid of change that not only am I reluctant to have you come and shake some stuff up, I refuse to invite you to do so. I recognize that you are able to take dry and arid spaces and places in my heart and in my life and cause them to flourish beyond my conception. And so, God, I invite you to come in and shake it up. Shake up my assumptions. Shake up my poor attitude and disposition. Shake up my weak faith and belief. Shake up my weak practice and walk. Draw me closer to you so that your holiness is reflected in me. Create in me a clean heart. If there's any wicked way within me, lead me to thy way everlasting. God, cultivate in me the character that you see that I need in order that I might flourish in Christ. Somebody ought to say, shake it up. God, even now I'm praying, shake us up. Shake, up, shake us up out of our malaise. Shake us up and wake us up out of our sleep and our slumber. The enemy has been playing a lullaby. 
and he has rocked many, many to sleep, including some of the saints. And God, we need you to shake the bassinet. Shake the bassinet so the babies can get up and at least start drinking some milk. And God, those that have been on milk for too long, shake them up so that they can begin to develop the teeth that they need, so that they can begin to eat on the meat of your word. God, shake us up, because the enemy is already doing a shaking in the land. He's already doing a shaking in the community, shaking in our families, shaking in the lives of our children, and God, we need you to shake us up. So that we can walk with you in a new kind of way. Walk with you in a new kind of anointing. God, church, as normal, as usual, it ain't hitting. And God, we need the real thing. We need the real God. We need your real presence. God, more. Shake me up. Every time I find myself focusing more on what other people aren't than what you're trying to do in me, shake me up, God. Whenever my sense of criticism and self-righteousness and judgment is dominating my thinking so that you are not able to get at the root of my own condition, Father, shake me up. Every time I walk into the church and I think and I say to myself, either implicitly or explicitly, I thank God I ain't as bad as them. God, shake me up to, to make me recognize my great need for you. God, every time I am tempted to downplay my faults and sin, shake me up and remind me that it was for that that Christ died. And then bring me back to the foot of the cross and fill me afresh with your power. God, shake me up. Shake me until nothing in me remains the same. Until I am transformed from head to foot in the image of Christ. Shake me up until my speech reflects you. My walk, my talk, my attitude is a mirror image of your presence. God, shake me up. paused later early when I was reading something jumped out to me in the text that that I hadn't noticed before when it talks about in verse number 9 the voice of the Lord makes the hinds to calf that when he speaks he's able to to cause things to give birth things to be born And all of this a reflection of the ministry of Jesus. It was Jesus who went out into the wilderness, tempted by the, uh, fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, tempted by the enemy, defeats the enemy by the power of God's word and his testimony. It's Jesus who quite literally transforms a wilderness into a place of God's victory over Satan. Jesus who invites the woman by the well again, to participate in the in the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. And it is also Jesus whose ministry is able to produce life in those who are dead in their trespasses and sins. Come and worship with me the God who gives life. Discover the forest, the the place where Jesus talks about life and life more abundantly. Come and let us together enjoy the abundance that is found in the presence of our great God. In his temple, everyone speaks of his glory. Any who come to God have some witness, and this is sort of the chaotic uh, uh, quality of the text, right, where, where it begins, uh, it, excuse me, it ends in, in a similar fashion to the way that it began. It's an invitation for those who are in the temple to give some indication as to, to why you are present. Because all who come into God's temple come with a certain, a certain kind of testimony. 
We're not here just to pass time or to check off religious boxes, but our presence in any holy space is a reflection of our acknowledgement of who God is. And in this case, we acknowledge him as being the God of strength and the God of victory. Now for a minute, if you don't mind, I just want everybody who's in this temple, if you don't mind, if you're in this temple, just to give God praise. If you know him as the God of strength, if you know him as the God of victory. The text says that anybody who comes into the presence of God, who comes to his temple, they speak of his glory. Whatever language you speak, if you have to sign, if you clap, if you stomp, if you sing, if you preach. When we come into his presence and couple, when we come to sacred places set aside for worship, and we come with our testimony. And when we arrive, he paints a picture of what we see. The Lord who sitteth upon the flood. Yes, the Lord sitteth king forever. That word there, flood, again, is a, is a, a Ugaritic word that talks about the chaos that existed prior to creation. The psalmist says that it is God, it is our God, who has enshrined himself on top of the chaos, the confusion. And he brought order to it and he established his throne. And it is that God who is king forever, that God who we worship forever. And as he paints this picture of Elohim, the creator God who, who, who brought creation into existence by his word and enshrines his throne on the foundation of chaos where he has created order. He paints to me a beautiful picture of the ministry of the Lord Jesus. That just as Elohim spoke existence into being by his word. So Jesus, the word made flesh, brings redemption and reconciliation to the chaos that is in our world as the result of sin and death. That when Jesus ascended onto the cross, the cross in many ways became a throne for him. And it was a throne established on the chaos created by sin and death. That when Jesus allowed himself to be mounted upon that cross, it was so that he could declare his victory over all of those things that have created the chaos that we see in our world. And that a because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, he reveals himself to be the Son of Man. That is God made flesh. He is Emmanuel, God who is with us. So that in the same way that the story begins, a God who takes chaos and creates a wonderful and good world, he now comes and rescues that world, damaged by sin and the devil and his rebellion, and he restores it unto himself by his own sacrifice. Hey, help me, Holy Ghost. And then all those who come to him by faith receive forgiveness of their sin. And then at the foot of his cross, we can invite the Ruah of God that God breathe on us so that we are not just clean, that we are not just forgiven, but that we are also filled. That God, we thank you. Hey, we give you glory because of what you've done for us through the ministry of the Lord Jesus. You have prepared a place for us in the midst of the chaos. Even in Babylon, we are seated in, seated in heavenly places. Even in a world filled by decay, death, destruction, and sin. Even now, eternity dwells in our hearts. God, we thank you. And 
And the psalmist close, closes us out appropriately. And this is our close. That it is this God in Christ who sits on the throne. A throne that he has established on top of the chaos, bringing order and life. That God, that God, the God who, who brings order to disorder, the God who brings healing to our disease, that God, the God who is able to speak to the wind and the rains. The one whose voice can break even the hardest head and the most stubborn will. That God will give strength unto his people. You know, it, it's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, one of the things my wife, you know, she loves, she loves to go on um, Facebook Marketplace trying to find stuff. Um, I keep telling her, you know, it's just people trying to offload stuff that they don't want. <laughs> and we and then rarely, rarely, I ain't going to say never, but rarely does she come home with something. And I'm like, oh, wow, you got one. Uh, <laughs> we're laughing. We, uh, uh, this cat adopted us recently. Uh, we... Yeah, right. We were sitting on the back porch. Uh, this was one of our one of our routines is at the end of the day we sit out on the porch, and um, we decompress. We would talk through the day and, and whatever. So we're on the back porch, and um, this kitten, we were a little older than a kitten, a little over a year, just started visiting with us, uh, out of the blue. And uh, you know, we tried to fight it. Uh, you know, we tried to fight it. And then I looked up and, you know, her and Lizzie, they feeding the cat, giving the cat water, whatever. So, you know, um, I made my contribution, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, and, um, and so, um, anyway, we decided, okay, we're going to take the cat in to uh, see the vet, but we need a carrier. Um, and so she went on Mar Facebook Marketplace to find a carrier. Lady had one for sale for ten dollars. Ma'am, if you're watching today, I know you know, no offense. Um, um, you know, get the carrier home, and and, and needless to say, uh, <clears throat> you know, I I I, I asked Sean, does the lady have a return policy of any kind? Uh, is there any way for us to get our money back? That's. That's sometimes how, how we do. Uh, we, we, you know, you, you know, you, 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 somebody tell you, you, you know, I got so-and-so gave me this or that. You know, depending on the giver, you may or may not get excited. Because it may or may not add value. But the psalmist closes this out in this particular way because he has in every way, shape, and form established for us that God is truly the giver of every good and perfect gift. And so the benediction for this psalm and for this message is appropriate for the worshiper. That in light of that God and his commitment to giving you strength, then take heart and offer praise that the God who is father and gives his children everything that they need for life, life more abundantly, everything that pertains to righteousness, that that God gives strength to his people. Can you touch somebody and tell them, knock? Touch somebody and tell somebody else and say, ask. Come on, tell somebody else, seek. Because if you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, it'll be given. If you seek, you will find. That is the promise made by our good God. 
He will give you strength and he will give you blessing. Just said he, he will bless his people with shalom. That is top to bottom peace. That is wholeness. That, that means that there is no disruption in my inner being. Today, the place, we, this year we're talking about transforming spaces, transforming lives. And this text reminds us that we worship a God who has, can, and is transforming the world around us constantly. That he has the ability to transform what's going on in you. That he can take defeat and transform it into victory. He can take loss and show you how in your loss he is still working all things together for your good. I close just, just wanting to encourage you to trust him. Bring what you have. Don't allow the enemy to convince you that you've got to get it together before you can show up at his throne. No, 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 no. That's why the cross exists, to take care of the chaos we're in. Come on, tell somebody, don't try to get it together. Bring whatever you have and put it in the hands of him whose voice is able to speak life into your death. Put it in his hands. And all I need is just two or three witnesses who know that, that whenever you put it in God's hands, God knows how to work it out. Has, has he ever worked it out for you? I, God, I thank you. Just let me, I'm closing now. I'm on my way to God, I thank you. I thank you for every way you've made. I thank you for every door you open. God, I thank you. I thank you for every time the enemy said no and you said yes. God, I thank you. I thank you for every time my insecurity tried to rise up like Moses. You came alongside me and let me know that I am that I am is with you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you that when I didn't have the words and I didn't know what to say, you taught me the word through your word. And, and by your word, now I have a word. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for all of the times when I cried real tears into my pillow and didn't think anybody understood. But you showed up in the midnight hour and gave me joy unspeakable. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for for every enemy you have made to be God I thank you Lord for every time every time you fixed it when I thought it couldn't be for God thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you God for not just being the God in the Bible but being the God of the Bible God thank you Thank you. Anybody got to thank you in your spirit? We got to go, but come on, before we give the benediction, come on, can we just say thank you, Lord? Thank you. And anybody got to thank you for what God is about to do? Can anybody thank him for the healing that's on the way? Can anybody thank him for the door that's about to be open? Can anybody thank him for the way that he's going to make? God, we give you thanks, not just because of what you've done, but God, what we know that you can do. God, thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Grandma and them used to say, he's all right. I tried him and he's all right. God, thank you that you can do anything but fail. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, if there's somebody there, just give them a hug. And then I'm going to ask you to pray with them before we go. Just give them a hug. Even now. Even now. 
And can you just begin to pray for them that the voice of God, the voice of the Lord, we need that voice. We need to be able to hear him. Ooh, my mama used to aggravate me growing up. My mama used to aggravate me growing up. And I come and I ask her the answer to, to a question. And if she would tell me, you need to go pray and talk to God about it. And at the time, I didn't know what she was doing, but I understand now that even mama's voice, the power of mama's voice can't surpass the authority and the power of God's voice. When mama and daddy forsake, God will be a mom. Oh, come on, somebody talk to me this morning. And I want you to find somebody you can pray for and pray with and pray for them that they would have access to the voice of God. Can you find them? Let's pray for them. Pray for them concerning the ministry of Jesus. If you're here this morning, dead in your trespasses and sin, far from that peaceful shore, very deeply stained in, within, sinking to rise no more. I want you to know, but the captain of the sea, he can hear your despairing cry and from the waters lift you and save him I Listen, can you just begin to pray for them, God, even now, God, that they may know you through the power of your resurrection. We're praying, God, every person in the building, those that are joining us online, God, even now, that they would know you through the ministry of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that when you made the world, it was good. It was very good. We're grateful that you made man in your image, the Imago Day. We're grateful that when the enemy came and tried to disrupt your plan for humanity, enticing them to sin and bringing in death, that you already had a plan in place for our redemption. We thank you, God, that through the seed of Abraham, through the ministry of Jesus Christ, you have raised up a new people from the line of the second Adam that, that through the ministry of Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection, that he died for our sin. We thank you that we have been forgiven by his completed work, that the sins that were attached to us, he took them upon himself, that he dealt with those sins on the cross, and we're grateful that, God, by virtue of that forgiveness, we have access to your spirit. Our prayer, God, is everyone in here today would know you as the forgiving God, the forgiver of sin. That everyone would know you in here as the forgiver of sin through the ministry of Jesus. And our prayer, God, is that everyone in here, God, would have the indwelling presence of your spirit. That, God, everyone in this building would have the witness of your spirit. That we would know that you are on board. Walk with them. Talk with them. Infuse them with your power and use them, God, to the furtherance of the kingdom, righteousness, and its glory. God, even now, even now, all over the building, we pray for the Ruach, the breath of God, to breathe life into all those, God, who are lifeless. Even now, God, breathe in us so that we can breathe through you. Oh, even now, even now. As we're praying, I want to extend an invitation to any who may be here. If you're here this morning and you don't have a church home, 
If you don't have a church home, we're in, sending this invitation to you. If you've never been baptized, we'd love to talk to you about maybe taking that step. If you're here this morning, this invitation is to you. If you're here, you've been baptized, you have professed faith in Christ, you're just right now just don't have a church. We would love to be your church family. I would love to be your pastor. If you're here this morning, you don't have a church, you don't have a church family, we're extending this invitation to you if you're here this morning. If you're nervous about coming, just talk to somebody next to you. They'll walk up with you. But if you're here, we'd love for you to come if you're here. standing just a couple of quick announcements before we leave um, we are super super excited about uh, our two week summer camp that we're hosting uh, alongside the Tampa Bay Watch there is a information in the vestibule uh, also on uh, the website and our social media pages if you have children that fall within the range of of the camp, we are inviting you to please get them signed up. After today, the, uh, the invitation will go public, uh, but we uh, were able to keep it in-house for a while because we wanted to make sure that the kids within our community would have the opportunity. And so if you have not gotten your kids signed up, it is going to be a wonderful camp. Um, we have many, many, many um, just some, some, some great experiences planned for the kids. Uh, the information is in the vestibule. If you have not registered, please, ma'am, please, sir, get your kids registered today. Today is it. Uh, second, uh, we currently, you know, we're in the middle of putting together our campus redevelopment plan. Um, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we were blessed to have a, an architect who has volunteered to do the drawings at no cost. Amen. 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 He's going to do the drawings at no cost. If you've seen some of the, the, um, the estimates that we've gotten for drawings, you, you'd be maybe clapping and praising a little bit louder. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Amen. It's, amen. It's, it's a, huge, a huge value. And so... Uh, we're at that critical juncture where we're getting, we're eliciting feedback from everyone so that uh, everyone's feedback can be included in, in some form or fashion in the master plan that is being developed. So if you have an opinion about anything as it relates to the campus, now is the opportunity. Um, you know, the, the information is back there so that you can fill out, you can do it uh, physically. There's a physical copy, I think, back there. You can, no, not today? Okay. Well, you can go online. There's a link. You can go online. Uh, you can go online. And, um, and so, you know, <clears throat> you know, if you feel like the carpet should be a certain color, now is the time to get your input in. You feel like, oh, that, I just, that, that one door, I don't think anything should ever happen to that door, you know, because uh, my, my daddy put that door in, you know, whatever. If there's something particular uh, that, that you would love to see incorporated in the design, uh, we are intent on this being a collaborative process. So, uh, but this is the last week. This is the last week where we will, uh, uh, have that portal open to get congregational feedback, and then we're giving all of that information to uh, to our architect, and he'll work on drawing up some plans, and then when we have uh, a rendering, uh, then we'll all come together and we'll have something to talk about. Amen? Amen. Uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, you ain't got one there. <laughs> Amen. All right, okay. Are we doing blood pressures next door? Amen. And also, we, we are... 
Uh, the health, um, health and wellness team will be next door uh, doing blood, blood pressure checks. And so please, let's go through there and, um, and make sure that we're taking care of um, what we need to take care of. Amen. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, world without end. And every believing heart said, Amen. Amen. We love you.